Brian, I'm speaking to you today because you signed a new contract. You're gonna, you've committed to the club for another another three years or so. What was your reaction when uh, when the club offered you the contract? Uh, yeah, obviously I was really pleased by that. Um, I think when I came here uh, back in October um, 19, my my intentions was to stay here for a long time and hopefully do something special with Brentford. Um, so, I mean, the recognition by the club to kind of buy in on, on the project that's, that we've been doing at the moment, um, the coaching staff, the players, uh, everyone around the club as well, uh, was a big um, thing for me and I really appreciate it a lot. A lot. So, I mean, for me to, to get this opportunity to stay here for, for a few more years or three more years is, um, is something that I really uh, appreciate. We can hear in your, your voice, you're a little hoarse at the moment. Is that because the players aren't, haven't been doing the right things and you've been shouting yeah. at them too much? <laughs> We're trying to uh, to get them up to the gear where we want them, you know. So, no, I yeah, there's a lot of shouting going on on the pitch. So, obviously, my voice is a little bit low at the moment. The other thing also is important to mention for the, for the fans is that we're talking um, the day before we travel to Huddersfield. They'll see this. They'll see this next week, so we won't go into too much detail. But before that game, before we travel up there, what sort of what sort of shape do you think the, the squad is in? Um, I think we're in a fantastic shape. I think I spoke to um, to a few of the players this week, and I mean the the feeling at the moment of time where we, um, as a player, you go into a game and you know uh, the opposition will not score, uh, and if they score, it will be a maximum of one goal. That's been statistically what we're doing so far. That's a great feeling to go in. Of course, things can always go different, but you know, just to have that feeling, that solidness in the team, has brought an incredible feeling into the team. And then, at the same time, having a, a team that scores the amount of goal that we do at the moment. I mean, that, that, that combination there is just incredible. I mean, everything is about self-confidence, I would say, in football. And to have these two elements uh, as a base when you go into games, uh, I don't really think you can ask for, for much more. In terms of, as, as you just mentioned, the mood, what's the difference between where we are now and maybe, say, sort of last October, November, when results <laughs> weren't going so well? Well, um, I remember when I when I arrived here from uh, from a former club. Um, I thought we had a lot of good players here. Uh, you immediately saw the the quality, the individual quality, especially technically. Um, but I think two things for me is important: the, the buy-in on the project, the kind of togetherness that everyone is moving in the same direction, and kind of uh, have understood if we want to do something special, this is the path. Um, that is enormous at the moment of time, uh, where I think when I arrived here, you kind of still had to convince a lot of players uh, that this is actually what we're going to do. Um, and I think the second thing is is that uh, the squad togetherness in terms of also tactically being better, uh, doing things together as a team. So especially on the defensive part, I think uh, we have improved uh, majorly. And that you can only do as a unit. So I mean, uh, offensively, last year we, we did a lot of great goals as well. And there is a lot of individual skills combined in that when you're talking about offensive football. Even though you need to have good relations that uh, the magic by the individual player can, can often decide games anyway. But for the defensive part, uh, you, you definitely need to do it as 11 players. And the moment where someone checks out, that's where the problem starts. So, so for me, that, that whole part about um, getting that right has been the biggest difference uh, that I've seen uh, from from last year and on to now. Thomas has mentioned a couple of times about you being in charge of the defensive side of the game. Is that something that came naturally to you? Um, well, I think I've I've been uh, educated quite well um, in my former club uh, in terms of that. Uh, I've always been used to being around a team that had to perform well uh, against better teams in Europe, for instance, and. You know, to do that, you, you need a structure. Um, I remember uh, the, the former coach, they always said that uh, good defense wins titles and good attacks sell ticket at stadium. So I think um, that part about doing something special uh, in terms of winning something is about being solid. So it, it has always been close to my heart um, and it's always been something that has been a major focus on. So um, the last 10 years, I've been quite you know going into depth with with all details so in terms of that yes it's, it's probably something that um, that I've been uh, having as a part of my identity for a long time just in, if we go into sort of just at least one specific on, on the defense during 
the back end of last season, pre-season, the first five or six games of this season, we had three central defenders. We then seem to have switched quite seamlessly to playing uh, playing a back four. How easy is that for coaches and players to be able to go between two systems? Because it seems like you'd need to do an awful lot of work in pre-season to get one right, and you seem to have done one in pre-season and then switched to another one. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think the, the major thing when you talk about tactical uh, football, it, it's about principles. Uh, because if you, if you work on principles, then it's quite easy to change. Um, and that's exactly what we've been doing. So our style of play in a, in a defensive way, we have structured out of principles. And that means uh, whether we play with two or three centre-backs, it's basically the same things that we rely on. So, for instance, one of our biggest words is, is distances. Distances in the team for me is everything. Um, and if the distances are right, then you will most likely also succeed with a lot of elements. Of course, there can be like the magic point I explained before, where you, you just have to kind of bend your head and say that that's well done by the opponent. But if you have these uh, principles right and the players understand them, it's so easy to, um, to switch between two systems, for instance, because we don't really change the way we do it, but we just change the... Um, the structure or the numbers you could say uh, in, in a line. Obviously a lot of our fans will see Thomas sitting in the same position you are addressing the, the rest of the press, um, the rest of the media rather, but tell us a little bit about the rest of the, the first team coaching, obviously you've got Kevin Andreas in there now, Andy, Andy Keyes obviously knew yeah. that the, the analysts, how, what, tell us a little bit about that group and how you interact with them. Well I think it's, it's um, I think we have, we have had some great challenges this year um, and I'm, I'm saying that with all my respect for the guys who's there now but also with the respect for the guys who's not there anymore. But I mean, to, to have two key staff members uh, with Iñaki and, and Nico leaving uh, um, from we started the season until now, it's not easy because uh, every time someone new comes in, even though that's very, very good people uh, or very skilled people, it's always a change. So, I mean, big credit for uh, to, to the new guys, uh, Andreas coming in and Andy, of course, for being that quick to adapt into Brentford's uh, way of doing things. Because that was like a major thing for us to, to get that adjustment done immediately. So um, if you want to do something this season, you can't really rely on having a few months where you need to work things together and get things gelled. So for me, um, they've done an amazing job to, to get to Brentford and quite quickly gel in and, and make sure that their, their areas uh, works as, as we uh, would expect. Um, Andreas has done really well on the set pieces. Obviously, uh, Andy coming in and taking over from Iñaki has been very good. And then I think Kev, as the club legend here, uh, on, a, on a daily basis, is doing an, uh, an incredible job to, uh, to make sure that everything is, is together. Well, last one little, last question before your voice completely, yeah. Yeah, completely conks out. You're here for three and a bit years. What do you hope and what do you think can be achieved in, in that period? Um, well, personally, um, I'm a quite ambitious guy. Um, and I feel that when you when you do a job and you go somewhere, um, you should always aim to do something special. And that's exactly how I feel in Brentford. I've been impressed for the very first second I, I stepped in uh, to this training ground and at Griffin Park as well, because th this club is just good people. It's so many uh, incredible uh, guys who wants to do the best for, for the club. But if we could just push that little bar a little bit and maybe create a little bit of history here, um, to make sure that Brentford gets what, what personally I actually think they deserve by all the hard work that has been done here the last couple of years, then that would be my major, my major aim.